Hello everyone, educators, parent educators, and school educators. Welcome to Pick a Book with Auntie Marcella. Last week, we dealt with how to utilize the writing to respond process with a grade K through two child. And this week, we are gonna do the same, but only with a grade three to five student. We will also look at the workbook. But what's most amazing about this week is that we have a special guest who is an author and we will be utilizing her book to walk through the writing to respond process. Today I have with me an awesome children's author. Her name is Karen White Potter. Hi Karen, can you say hi to our parents? Hi, nice to see you. Nice. So today Karen is going to, we're going to talk a little bit about one of her books. She has written a book called Compassion, Making the World Better with the Compassion Emotitude. Yes. And Karen has written so extensively on emotions, helping kids to understand how they feel. And if you remember one of the, my previous vlogs, we dealt with self-awareness. And I met Karen yesterday and I realized that all of Karen books work so well with all of the emotions that we've been talking about. And so today I have Karen on our show and she's going to talk to us about how, tell us everything about her emotitudes. We'll be right back. Welcome back educators. I am here with Karen White Potter, author, illustrator of her books. And her most recent book, Compassion, is what we will get focusing on today. And before we get into Karen's book, she's going to share with us a terminology that she's created. It's called Emotitude. Go ahead, Karen. Thank you for having me today. And uh, before we get started, I want to play a game with you. All right. Um, we're going to play the Emotitude game. All right. So can you spin the wheel? Oh, anger. Mm. Now, can you tell me a sentence about ang anger that you've ever had in your life, or do you know of somebody else that has been angry? I have been angry, especially when I look at situations where people are taking advantage of others, and the person that's being taken advantage of cannot fight back, and so it angers me, especially if I cannot do anything about it. And yes, I have experienced um, that emotion before. That is awesome. Yay, you Thank are you. an emotitude winner. All right, Thank congratulations. You very much. What does that mean? An emotitude winner? I'm going to wear it. Well, an emotitude is a little teeny vibratory being. You see the little guy right there? Mm -hmm. Well, he's a, a baby emotitude. And emotitudes, actually, they're imaginary, but, and they're in all of my books, the emotitude series. Okay. And they help children cope with their feelings of all of these feelings mm -hmm. because everybody in the world has feelings of disgust, anger, love, sadness, conniptions, which is like frustration, grief, fear, unconditional love, compassion, joy. So our lives are full of emotion mm -hmm. and self-awareness is what brings us to center to help us understand who we are in the world with our feelings good and to cope with them awesome. and um, so my books have a character named dr kitsch who is an emotitudeologist all right who uses an emotitector to detect emotitudes mm. and he gives kids emotitude glasses to see the feelings they feel mm. so they can cope all right so does that mean that I would have gotten an emotitude winner if I had fallen on any one of them? Any one of them. All right. And no matter which, what you said, there's no right or wrong mm -hmm. because everyone has feelings and everyone experiences them differently. Awesome. And sometimes I bring this with me when I talk to children and sometimes we'll spin and we'll get a, an emotion they don't understand and I can, they can pick another emotion. Mm -hmm. So everybody's an emotitude winner. Awesome. So tell us about compassion. Well, compassion. Oh, your book, compassion. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, my book, 
compassion is about a young man named Doug who um, goes to school every day and he sees this little dog on the way to school and all his friends don't pay attention to the dog, but he notices the dog and sees that it's being mistreated and gets really upset after going every day for between summer, spring, fall, and then winter comes and the dog gets stuck in the snow. And it's what happens when Doug does something because he feels in his heart that the dog needs him and he helps it. Awesome. But can you just read a portion for us? Um, just maybe your favorite piece? Yeah. Um, where probably dog, exp dog expresses his emotion of compassion or anything, maybe your favorite part in the book. Well, my favorite part is, um, I love this, I love the look on Doug's face here because he he's angry at right here. And then he sees- Why is he angry by the way? Because the dog is being mistreated. Okay. And so he said, Doug felt sad when the, then he saw something that re, he realized he was judging mm -hmm. the people that he was angry with. And he says, Doug felt sad when the woman in the wheelchair with the swollen legs told her story. His heart hurt to think how alone these two must feel right now. Then he started to think of a way to help. Can you take the snow off of Pepper and warm him up? Doug said. Of course, she said. Doug laid the dog in her lap and began to smile. Beautiful. So he felt an emotion and then he did something. Um, he reacted in a particular way. Yes. Well, super. Thank you very much. And what I want to do at this time is to show our listeners, since right now in my series we are dealing with how to use the writing to respond process to react to what we read. I want to show our listeners today how they can actually use the writing to respond process to work with kids. Welcome back educators. And this time I'm going to show you how you can use the writing to respond process to go through books. Now we spoke about looking at books for the emotions and this one here, deals with anger, it deals with compassion. How do you, you became angry, but then what do you do? Can you tell us where we can find your book, Karen? Um, it's on Amazon and you can purchase it or go to Everfield Press and we do uh, school visits if you ever want one of the authors to come to your school. Right. Um, and of course, we I cater to homeschooling parents as well. Yes. So I usually tell parents, so that's why I always say, school and home educators because an educator is anyone who passes on information and that could be in a school a grandma a, a mom anybody and so i recognize that so the writing to respond process for those of you who looked at our k through two step one is always identify and so this is what the grades three through five workbook looks like and this is what the identifying they are looking for the title of the book and in this case the title of the book is compassion making the world better with the compassion emotitude nice and then we also want to find out who is the author that's the next thing we're identifying and this is Karen white Porter, and she happens to be the illustrator as well so remember we are looking for the illustrator the title and also the author and we have all three of those and that is step one now step two would be to summarize use two to three sentences to tell us the short version of the story summarizing is not paraphrasing paraphrasing is telling all the story over in your own words but summarizing is telling us the short version the main idea and so karen told us a while ago what the story is about so it's about a young boy who sees a dog being mistreated and then he feels a particular way about it and he does something. So he goes ahead and he helps the woman. And he was judgmental at the beginning. He thought that people were just 
in treating the dog, but he realized that the lady was not able to help. So a short version, a young boy who goes to school every day, sees a dog being mistreated, and he does something about it. He shows compassion. But the most important part of the writing to respond process is react. What we want to do now is to ask students to evaluate using their feelings. And so we have here, react to what you read. And on our chart, we say, how do you feel? What does the story, what feelings come through when you re read the story? Does it make you, do you feel surprised? Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you perplexed? What is that feeling? And if that child says a feeling of surprise, we want them to tell us what about it made them surprised. So for example, if I were to take that book and I were to ask um, a child, how did you feel when you found out that the dog owner had a disability? If that child says, oh, how did you feel when you read the story? And the child could probably say, I felt surprised when I found out that the dog owner had a disability. And now you have, so here's what's happening. The child has told you how he or she felt and they have gone into the text to give you evidence. So if they had just said, surprised, surprised about what? That the dog owner had a disability and they would go into the text to find that. And that is the most important part or most important aspect of the writing to respond process. We could also talk about, we could also ask questions that deal with evaluation. Okay, how do you feel about, you know, the whole idea that nobody came by to take care of that lady for three seasons? What, what's happening? Who took care of her? So all of those things that students can start questioning things. And that's where the question would be, how, how is it that somebody never came to see her after so long? Is she, you know, what's going on? So this would be a place, and this is the fourth step of the writing to respond process, where kids ask things that they think that they don't know. And this would probably be a question. Why is it that no one came to check on her after so long? Is it because that she can take care of herself and nobody decided to come? And so that would be something that I would encourage the kids to probably think why, or maybe ask the author. And that's where yeah. a letter to you would come in to find out, well, why is it that nobody came to see Mrs. Um, or the Miss person, yeah. Miss Sadie, all right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we want to em emphasize is the next step, which is suggestion. And on our worksheet, we have it looking like just a little word. Suggestion, when we come to that section, kids are learning to do problem solving. They're learning to do research. So a question would be, how else could the other kids in the story, or how could dog get his friends to help take care of that um, animal? So this would be, this is where the kids would come up with suggestions. Well, we think that probably he should just talk to his friends. Maybe they just were too busy on their phones, but if they're being made aware of the environment, probably they would help after all. So these are things that we would expect kids to do. So I am so glad that I could, we could, you know, find ways to actually work together. And hopefully what I really want out of this vlog today is to let parents understand you can do so much with one book. So here is one book. We could take a look at their feelings and we could also look at their writing. So after the kids, would have answered each of these questions. Identify, summarize, react to what you read, one question, evaluation. The next thing they would do is to put it together in a paragraph form. So if your child is in the grades three to five, they're beginning to write. And now what they would do is to take their sentences and now put it in paragraph form. So any book, and that's the one thing about the writing to respond process. We do not tell you what to have your child read. You will select your child's reading material based on your child's interest, based on your child's educational level, and based on your own belief system. As I told you before, 
This workbook is also helpful for preparing your child for standardized testing, um, whether you're writing the informative or the argumentative. So our next vlog, I will walk you through the other half of the workbook where you will learn how to use it to teach your child how to prepare for the standardized test. You can find the workbook on my website at www.buddingwriters.com and you can find Karen White Potter's book on her website everfieldpress.com and remember to look for me on Facebook remember to also check my podcast because on there we will deal with how to implement interventions in education thank you for listening and I look forward to hearing you next time. Bye-bye.